here with open arms. We know the times get hard, and we're here to help at North Point when you're feeling low. Thank you for tuning into North Point, making help happen. My name is Biftu Takula, and I'm your host. This is a new series brought to you by North Point Health and Wellness Center. We want to connect with you about topics in health and wellness that impact our community. We will feature guests from our team and around the community to talk about the health and wellness issues most important to North Minneapolis. Together with our guests, our community, and you, our listeners, we are partnering to create a healthier community. Today, we are joined by Dr. Paul Erickson, who served as medical director here at North Point Health and Wellness Center from 2006 to very recently, 2022. Dr. Erickson has worked at North Point for the last 26 years. He is a board certified physician in family medicine, adolescent medicine, and hospice. Dr. Erickson attended medical school at the University of Minnesota and holds a master's in public health from the University of Minnesota as well. And Dr. Erickson is here today to talk to us about lung health and healthy uh, lungs um, uh, as part of making health happen. Um, so welcome, Dr. Erickson. Thanks for joining us. Hello. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to talk about our lungs. Absolutely. Um, so we'll dive right in. We have some questions um, about uh, healthy lungs. So tell us um, what do the lungs function in the body? What is what is their function? Well, our lungs um, provide our breath and their primary function is to bring in oxygen to the body and get rid of uh, carbon dioxide. So the um, all our body cells um, operate, need oxygen to function. And we bring in oxygen through our you know, nose and mouth. And we breathe it into our lungs. In our lungs, um, the lungs then uh, meet up with the blood supply and they give the blood supply oxygen while at the same time they take carbon dioxide, which is kind of as a, a waste product in our, in our cells, in our body. And they then exhale the carbon dioxide out into the environment. So the primary function is to bring in oxygen and to get rid of carbon dioxide so we can function. That's pretty straightforward. Um, how would the lungs work? How do the lungs work with the body um, and uh, the heart specifically? They are great partners and essential partners. And um, so our heart pumps blood around our body and it goes two ways. It, it pumps it out to the body that needs things and it brings it back to the heart so it can circulate. And um, one of the functions of the heart is to bring oxygen to all parts of the body through the blood vessels. And that the heart has to get that blood with oxygen from the lungs. So when our, our body, the, the blood flows back to the heart, it's bringing blood that does not have oxygen, that has carbon dioxide. That blood then is pumped into our lungs and our lungs then exchange that carbon dioxide for oxygen. That, that blood then that has now has oxygen in it um, is pumped back to the heart and then the heart pumps that oxygenated blood out to our body to you know provide our provide oxygen to all our cells and to the essential functions that we need. So they are really partnered to um, bring in oxygen, get rid of carbon dioxide and make things work. Absolutely. Um, so it might seem obvious, but why would having healthy lungs be important to our overall health? Um, you know, if the lungs are not functioning properly, we don't get that exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide as well. So we need oxygen to, to live, to function. And um, if our lungs aren't working well for some reason, uh, whatever reason it might be, they don't do that function of transferring oxygen to the blood and picking up carbon dioxide to, um, to, 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 exhale, to exhale, to get out of the body. So our body then just doesn't have enough oxygen to do its essential functions and carbon dioxide builds up in our body, which can serve someone as kind of a toxin in our body if we get too much of it. So um, it's, it's essential. I mean, our lives start with a breath and they end with the breath and our breath 
is sort of the essential function of life. And um, how would you recommend someone make sure that they have good lung health? What practices do you recommend? Um, well, I think we don't want to um, give the lungs any sort of toxins. So I think uh, providing air that is clean and uh, and not inhaling anything that would be tox tox toxic, uh, toxic as far as cigarette smoke. Um, so I mean, not smoking. Um, smoking deposits tar and chemicals into the lungs, which then damage them. So I think smoking is one of the primary uh, uh, injuries that we see in the lungs, um, but also other pollutants can do that. Um, so I think, um, you know, avoiding breathing in bad things would be one way to keep your lungs healthy. And then it's like any sort of function in our body, um, exercise, the more we use it, the more efficient it becomes. So mm -hmm. when we exercise a fair amount, our body gets more efficient at this transfer of oxygen to carbon dioxide. Mm -hmm. And so exercise, I think, is um, essential to, uh, you know, optimizing um, your lung health. And then also uh, nutrition, um, mm -hmm. you know, fuels our body. And, um, and the, we need to give our body good fuel so that it can do this work and then also staying hydrated. So if we don't, if we don't drink enough water, um, things don't flow as well, they don't exchange as well. Um, and then also if, if our weight is too much, that, imp that can impede our breathing as well. So I think exercise, not smoking, um, breathing as health, health, healthy air as possible mm -hmm. and uh, eating healthfully are all ways we can promote good lung health. Absolutely. And then looking for signs and symptoms of bad lung health, what uh, would you find uh, would qualify as bad lung health? You know, I think sometimes if the lung isn't functioning well, uh, the oxygen levels in our body drop and that mm -hmm. impacts lots of functions in the body. Um, and I mean, our brain needs uh, oxygen to function. All our cells need oxygen to function. And as the lungs, if the lungs are, are not in good health, we just, our oxygen levels actually end up being lower and then we just don't function as well. Um, the other thing is that, you know, if the lungs aren't working well, people get short of breath uh, because mm -hmm. they're, they're trying to get more oxygen, but they just, it doesn't work very well. So they get short of breath, they may cough. Um, and um, so I think shortness of breath, wheezing sometimes is a, so a sign of uh, bad lung health because the all the airways have little muscles around them. And when they contract, they we, we wheeze and then they're smaller and we don't get as much air. Mm. So some wheezing, coughing, uh, being short of breath, um, I think those are the major symptoms of bad lung health. And then, yeah, not being able to to uh, oxygenate our body as well as we would. Mm -hmm. And um, you may have already alluded to um, how to sort of improve lung health, uh, make sure that our um, lungs are getting the best kind of um, treatment as possible. But as far as air quality goes, um, how can we improve our environments around us? Well, um, you know, the, the best air is fresh air, I think. And mm -hmm. so spending time outside is important. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I think avoiding environments where there are toxins, you know, so if there is um, exhaust, if there is, you know, particulate matter coming out of smokestacks, um, if there's bad uh, uh, dust, um, all those things kind of clog up the lungs, so to speak. And um, I think, um, you know, from an environmental perspective, the, the less we re rely on uh, uh, fossil fuels and gas, I mean, mm -hmm. exhaust from gas uh, causes uh, an, um, an irritant in the lungs. Um, mm -hmm. Some of the industrial pollutants that come out of smokestacks can, can cause uh, uh, mm -hmm. irritation to the lungs. Um, so I think... Um, you know, generally having an environmentally wise approach to life. 
Um, indoors, I think, you know, there's there's pretty good evidence that having plants um, improves your air quality. So mm -hmm. I see a plant there. So um, I do, yes. <laughs> You're, and some more out there too. So that's so yeah. what your plant does is your plant is taking in carbon dioxide right. and giving off oxygen. And there are right. some plants that do that better than others. And so right. I think, you know, having plants around and um, I think being out in nature is, is helpful too. So, um, mm -hmm. and I think, you know, I just uh, really doing things that protect our environment uh, to keep our trees and our plants giving us oxygen and um, not making our air bad. Because when we breathe, we breathe it in through our nose and our mouth and our nose and our mouth um, filter, um, filter things out. And they then, you know, are the first defense against um, mm -hmm. irritants or mm -hmm. pollutants. And then it comes down into our lungs. And there, there's another layer there where it, it collects bad things too. Um, mm -hmm. So our body does try to keep these things out, but it can't right. keep all those things out. So. And in smoke-free environments, I, I want to I want to say yeah, sure. passive smoking. So people that, you know, even if you don't smoke, if you live in mm -hmm. someone's house or spend a lot of time in someone's house that does smoke, mm -hmm. that um, that secondhand smoke can yeah. cause the irritation and poor lung health as well. Absolutely. Um, and you probably already covered this a little bit, but remind us again some good lifestyle habits um, for good lung health. Well, I think uh, remembering to breathe. I, you know, I'm a believer in sort of a mindfulness kind of breathing exercise. I think mm -hmm. as we get, if we get stressed and we get too busy, you know, just mm -hmm. in the everyday non-exercise part of our lives, we sometimes mm -hmm. forget to breathe. And I think right. just having a, having some time in our days where we focus on our breath and just breathe deeply and help that relax us is is valuable. Um, I think exercise is probably the best thing, you know, I think um, yeah. to to really encourage good lung health and then um, uh, not smoking, not being around secondhand smoke, um, avoiding these irritants that I was mentioning. You know, there's other things that are in homes, dust, molds, mm -hmm. um, you know, artificial fragrances. Sometimes those things can impact lung health. So I think, um, you know, putting yourself in an environment that is as free of irritants and sort of toxins to the lung, as well as using the lung a lot, exercising it to make it function to its, you know, its optim, optimal, optimal ability. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, we went over some of the things uh, as far as lifestyle goes that lead to bad lung health, um, specifically about smoking. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of people have probably tried to quit smoking, um, more than once. Um, so what would you say for advice, uh, for someone who wants to start quitting smoking now? I mean, I think, I think we change our behaviors based on what we know about it. And so mm -hmm. I think educating ourselves about the dangers of smoking is, is important. Um, mm -hmm. and you know, learning why, sort of the why behind, behind why it's important to quit and then understanding the why of why we smoke. Everyone smokes, I think, for different reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, some people smoke as a stress reduction. Some people smoke as a habit. Some people smoke because they're addicted to nicotine. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you know, I think trying to understand what's your, what is, what are your barriers to, to quitting smoking? And then you know, I think we have this, you know, it, it's got to, we've got to have the mindset that first I, I really want to quit smoking. And then mm -hmm. um, when then we think about that and then we think about how to do that. Um, and I think, you know, it's different ways for different people. I think we're all individuals and some people do best with just stopping cold turkey. Some mm -hmm. people do best with a gradual weaning of the, of the cigarettes and the nicotine. Um, we, you know, utilize some um, nicotine products sometimes to help people wean themselves from the nicotine mm -hmm. addiction while they're getting rid of the sort of psychological addiction. Um, so I think, you know, um, you know, thinking about and maybe talking about that with someone about what, what is the best way for, for me to quit smoking? Um, 
And uh, so, um, you know, so I can find, get a kind of a plan that's individualized for myself. Um, and because I think we're all individuals and we need different things. So, uh, you know, and then different things work for different people. So, and, and just understand that most people that quit, quit many, many times before they eventually, you know, sure. for good. So, sure. you know, persevere, uh, don't give up, uh, mm -hmm. keep on trying and, uh, and understand that, you know, it's one of the better things you can do for your health to not smoke. Absolutely. Um, let's talk a little bit about, uh, COVID. So why should health lung, uh, lung, why should lung health be a concern in the time of COVID-19? Well, as I mentioned, our, our respiratory tract, so our nose, our mouth, our airways going down to our lung and our and the airways in the lung serve as sort of our first filter for infections, for dust, for, for irritants. And um, so if those things are healthy, they do their job a little bit better of fighting off whatever we might breathe in, whether it's a virus, whether it's an irritant. So I think, um, you know, good lung health uh, allows us in, if we have COVID to fight it off better. And COVID, mm -hmm. um, you know, primarily attacks the lung and that, mm -hmm. that, that is where it does its most damage. And um, so I think that if you start out with a healthy lung, you're much more likely to fight it off or have the least amount of, you know, consequences from it. You know, we're seeing folks that have lung disease or have lung problems getting COVID they they are not doing well they they don't do well because their lungs just don't have any reserve and that virus just attacks those uh, those lung cells and um causes lots of inflammation there and we can't breathe uh, we can't get oxygen and that's primarily where people are having getting really sick and in the icu from covid so i think the um good lung health is sort of preventative uh, is, you know, if you have COVID, you're less likely to get seriously ill. Right. Um, and then just before we wrap up, I want to talk about social determinants of health. Um, so whether you're an ethnic minority or um, part of a marginalized identity, how would you say um, lung health affects um, or how lung health uh, is determined by these social determinants of health. Mm -hmm. I mentioned some of the, there's some things in housing that makes a difference. So dust, mm -hmm. mold, uh, various irritants in a building. And mm -hmm. so I think if, so if folks, um, you know, if they're in rental or have various kinds of living situations that are not optimal, they are mm -hmm. breathing in air that's not optimal. So that impacts their health. Um, I think also uh, typically um, when you look at communities with less resources, they've been more likely to be uh, in the neighborhood of uh, manufacturing plants or freeways or um, things in the environment that put more, you know, sort of toxins in the air. And, um, and so I think that's, that's an important thing. Um, they're, uh, there is a, a, a problem, you know, uh, with something called radon that's in the soil that can get in people's basements. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, there's tests that you can do for those, but those cost money. And if you have limited resources, you know, you don't get those things done. And, and landlords are generally not very good about checking for those things. Um, so I think it, it, it has to do with, uh, you know, the environments uh, that, that mm -hmm. folks live in, that some of the social determinants determine um you know if you have to you know if your, your transportation is based on some other forms of transportation rather than your own car i think that can impact it you can end up breathing in more stuff that's not so good um and then food you know as i mentioned earlier uh, nutrition plays an important mm -hmm. part our overall health and our lung health so if mm -hmm. if we don't have access to fresh fruits and vegetables or you know those adequate amounts of foods, if there's any food insecurity, I think that ultimately impacts lung health as well. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, last but not least, um, let's talk about North Point and what services we have um, to improve lung health. Um, 
And if someone were to make an appointment and um, you know have a concern about their lungs, how would North Point be able to help them out? Well, in the medical department, you know, we approach that uh, with a sort of a, a medical eye um, and try to understand do they have healthy lungs or not? And we can evaluate that um, by talking to people and then examining them, listening to their lungs. Um, mm -hmm. We can evaluate that by doing an X-ray of their lungs. We can evaluate that by doing some breathing tests to see what kind of you know capacity they may have. Um, and then, you know, for folks that their lung health is not optimal, uh, then we there are certainly some treatments to help with that for asthma, for chronic lung, chronic obstructive lung disease or emphysema. Um, mm -hmm. And we also have a smoking cessation program, which is critically important, I think, uh, here in the clinic there, um, where people are referred uh, to our clinical pharmacist and um, they meet with them, they work with them, they provide either medications or nicotine replacement products if needed to help them smoke. Um, and uh, so I think smoking cessation and then the medical care that we can provide for um, for any kind of lung disorders that would, would occur. Great. Thank you. Well, that's all the questions I have. Um, so thank you uh, to Dr. Paul Erickson, medical director here at North Point Health and Wellness Center, um, for answering our questions about healthy lungs. Thank you. Thank you all. Take care. All right. Thanks, Biff, too. Thanks, Dr. Erickson. Thank you for listening to North Point, making health happen. We want you to know that we are here to partner with you, that you can dream, and that you can reach your dream. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch our show in video format. And if you like what you hear, share with a friend. To read more about North Point or find out more information about the COVID-19 vaccine, check us out on the web at northpointhealth.org. Through the doors.